Greetings internet and happy Sunday. This week I'm going to be talking about what you should do at a creative portfolio review or interview. Um, I had to go through quite a few of these when I was looking at unis and like choosing what unis I wanted to go to so it's this is kind of a big thing and I thought that doing a little advice video slash thing tutorial it's not really a tutorial I'm just gonna tell you a few stories of how my interviews went and stuff that you can do to make sure your interviews go well firstly that is what to actually expect at an interview or a portfolio review basically expect all of the teachers lecturers to tell you not to worry about it I mean listen to their advice but at the same time you don't want to be so carefree and easygoing that you're sort of coming off as I don't know too relaxed I guess I guess people don't really want to see you as someone that can just I don't know get like just do something out of the blue you kind of need to show that you're a committed person so you don't want to like be too laid back um this kind of is shown through your body language I know this is kind of an acting lesson in a way but when you do interviews sitting up straight and like either keeping your hands like on the table or in your lap just don't fiddle with them don't be like constantly trying to touch stuff or like touching your hair or continuously like touching your face whatever just just stay calm everyone else is going to be in the exact same situation so it's okay to feel nervous and it's kind of good to feel nervous but Try not to let it show. Try and just be confident about it. But yeah, they're going to tell you that, no, you don't have to worry about it. It's like, it's nothing. It's not serious. But it is going to determine what kind of offer they give you as to whether you're going to get a place or not. So I think it is kind of important. Um, this kind of like goes into the way that you present yourself as well. So on applicant days, I would always like dress smartly as if I was going to... I don't know like a proper interview like stiff upper lip lawyer interview or law school interview like just as much as it's comfortable to wear jeans and a t-shirt I just think it's nicer to present yourself in a more formal way like I never wore jeans I never wore jeans to any of my interviews I was either in a skirt and tights or like fancy office trousers like cigarette trousers um I never dressed too casually because I don't know I think it kind of shows that maybe it kind of puts across the idea that maybe you don't care as much um about where you are and what you're doing so you're not really gonna present yourself in that kind of way and I think it's important that you do I think it's important that even though it might not be the most formal of settings, the most formal of interviews, still present yourself as if you're going into an interview like that. Um, I think it says a lot about your character and I think it says that you're a very like committed and serious person. Um, and that's the kind of thing that people want to see. Um, I went to an interview, it was actually the portfolio review for the uni that I'm at now. And the girl that came, one of the girls that was there as well she put on like this duct tape suit so she'd made this suit out of like brown parcel tape and like trousers so she pulled them all the way up and she had a jacket on and like there was literally two others yeah there was only two others in the room me included and we just asked like that's kind of cool like where where why and she said that every single interview she's been to she's worn something that she's made and that specific interview she just decided to wear like this brown parcel tape suit it was really cool and I think that's the kind of thing that makes an impression so if you've got something like that or you have a certain I don't know if you have a certain style then obviously let that show through but <coughs> I think it's important to be professional even though they might say that it's like an easygoing relaxing like process I think it's a lot better just to act a little bit more professionally maybe than they want um 
I always kind of felt a little bit more confident if I was like dressed more professionally. I just felt, I don't know, I felt like maybe I had like the upper hand because I'm dressed a little bit more smartly than everyone else or they might take me a little bit more seriously because I'm dressed smart, more smart than everyone else. Um, I'm not saying this is true fact, I'm just saying that this is how I did it and I mean it worked for me I guess. I got, um, I got offers from all of the unis that I applied for, I got offers from all of them to study there, like conditional offers. Um, I'm also looking at my little, like massive notebook here as well where I've listed down stuff that I should probably talk about. Um, they tell you that you can bring your parents but I think that would just put more stress on you maybe. I know it would have put more stress on me. I didn't have my parents in there with me. Um, even if they were just sort of sat outside and they'd just done like a tour, like most of the time on applicant taster days or on um, like interview days, they'll give you a tour of the site again, like even if you have seen it before, they'll give you another tour of it. Um, and like they'll say that your parents are welcome to come along for that. But I just don't think that it's a good idea because I don't know, you can get a lot of influence from other people and it might not, and what you're saying or what your thoughts are might not be what you're saying or what your actual thoughts are. It's, I just think it's easier not to have them involved, to be quite honest. Um, especially like my dad is not, a, like he's not a creative arts person. He doesn't really get art, if that makes sense. Um, like if I ever bought my A-level sketchbooks home and I was like redoing loads and loads of work, he would ask like, why are you redoing it? Like, it looks fine. It's like, no, there's so much of the stuff that you don't see as a non-artistic person in comparison to like, say my art teacher who was constantly picking out like different pieces that needed to be tweaked or things that needed to be fixed or things that just needed to be completely ripped out. So I just think it's a lot easier not to have your parents in the room. That's just personal preference. If you want them there, have them there. But I don't know. I just, yeah, I think it's like a mind thing because I'm quite an independent person. I think I need, it, it, doing my interviews was something that I needed to do on my own. Therefore, I did. I think that's the best way of kind of putting it. Um, I'm now going to show you my university portfolio. Um, this was the one that I took to interviews and to portfolio reviews to all the different unis that I went to. These, This is the set of work that I took with me. Um, I'm going to voice over, I'm going to go through it very, very slowly, but I'm going to voice over this next bit. So it's not going to be me sat down in front of you, but I hope that's okay. Um, and I hope going through my actual portfolio rather than like sort of creating one with you will kind of give you a better idea on what a portfolio should look like and what you could include in your own. So I couldn't find my portfolio like specifically, but um, I've got all my A-level sketchbooks here and I'm just gonna go through and tell you like what I would put in a sketchbook um, in a portfolio. And um, I kind of spoke about layout last week. But yeah, I'm gonna go through my A-level sketchbooks and just pick out pieces that I would definitely put into a portfolio. So this is kind of a good example as to what could go in your um, portfolio because these pages are all like different materials like this is paint, this is um, pencil, tonal pencil and that's oil pastel. These are all like experimental pieces but again pieces that I'm quite proud of so I think play to your strengths and definitely show like your strongest pieces of work. I've got quite a lot of photography in the sketchbook so just different medias so you can show like the different kinds of materials that you can use or know how to use. Again this is just like more experimenting so I would put this kind of thing in my sketchbook. I'm really proud of this. Very very proud of this. Um, it's a recreation of a work done by an artist called Lisa Milroy. I think that was her name. Um, but yeah, sort of going through your creative process is a really good thing to like get interviewers to talk about because you know exactly what 
direction that you went in so you know exactly what you're talking about. You could show like the starting point of your work so this was an A-level uh, topic that was about structure so I've done a whole mind map of like structural things then I did a um, picture mind map I can't remember what they're called but yeah I think just showing like your thought process as well that can generate like a conversation or like more questions and this structure project specifically went on to um, looking at uh, landscapes and I was looking at like cave landscapes and obviously this piece I'm really 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 proud of it was the first piece that I'd like really broke through with with the project and allowed me to decide exactly where I was going with it so yeah I'm really happy with this piece and it's definitely something that I would put in my portfolio and I was looking like specifically at water so I did a lot of like reflection photography um, and that definitely like came into this project quite a bit and it allowed me to move on to like using different mediums and stuff. So I think it's definitely good to talk about ways that you've like moved on from different projects or taken projects in a different direction. Because you're allowed to say that stuff didn't work, it's good to say that kind of thing. Because it proves that like obviously your work has gone through a lot of um, like decision making, it's gone through a process to get to where it ended up. So this is like a larger final piece and pieces like this that are on a different scale I think are definitely good to put in and obviously pieces that show your strength and it kind of shows the, the progression of a project so I would definitely put this in my portfolio. And this page is from a different project but I think it's because it's so busy like this is definitely something that would like draw interest so and create and generate conversation and like questions and like the different materials that have been used so I think something like this is definitely really really interesting and will yeah it will generate questions and it, that's the kind of thing that you want in an interview. On this page I was using like two different styles of painting so this was a different style to this side um, which I think you can kind of see the difference and using something like that and explaining the differences is again something that's going to be really really interesting and appealing to an interviewer because they can see that you can work in different ways. So that is it for this week guys. Um, Wednesday. I am going on holiday tomorrow. Therefore I am unsure as to whether I'll be able to post a Wednesday video. Um, I'll probably have 4G network so I'll be able to put on my Instagram and maybe my Twitter. I don't really use Twitter, I just link it down below anyway. I don't really use it, so Instagram is probably the best place to find me. Um, yeah, I will say if I can or can't post the video. If I have a Wi-Fi, then it's not going to be a problem, but if I'm using my 4G, then it's not going to happen because it just will not work properly. And it will take absolutely ages to actually upload anything. So... Whether you get a Wednesday video or not this week, I don't know. Um, if you don't, then maybe I'll do a double bill on Sunday. Maybe I'll give you two videos on Sunday. Hmm. We shall see. We shall see. Um, what have I got planned for next Sunday? Oh, I know what I have planned for next Sunday. Actually, I could make it like a whole thing. Okay. Okay. Um, I know what I'm doing. I'm not going to tell you because otherwise I right please tell me if telling you about all my other videos like for the next week tell me if that's irritating because I, I don't know I feel like it's ruining a sense of surprise on what a video is I don't know but please tell me if you don't want to know what next week's video is and you just want to find out when I post it um but yeah thank you for watching and I should see you on Wednesday if I don't I apologize but I will definitely see you on Sunday. Bye everyone!